CBS News has learned that more than 54,000 people living and working in long-term care facilities have died from the coronavirus in the United States. That is more than 40% of deaths nationwide. Now, as states reopen, nursing homes are grappling with how to keep residents safe and maintain their quality of life as the pandemic continues. For more on this, let's bring in Dr. Dillard Elmore. He is the Senior Vice President of Diacon Medical Group and the Corporate Medical Director of Diacon Senior Living Services. Uh, Dr. Elmore, what health and safety precautions are being taken in nursing homes as they reopen to protect the elderly, and what should families keep in mind if they want to visit their loved ones? Well, I think it's important for families to remember that our population is the most at-risk population in the country, in the world, and that we have been keeping very tight infection practices and controls. And these practices and controls have been in place during a time when we did not have any visitation. And, you know, it's extremely difficult to keep COVID-19 out. Remember, we have strived to flatten the curve, not eliminate. So when you add extra complexity to the system, meaning individuals who are coming to visit their loved ones from, it could be from across the country, um, then you add extra potential for introducing COVID-19 into that community. Uh, we saw on the uh, House panel on COVID-19 on June 23rd, Dr. Redfield stated that for every one individual Individual who is symptomatic and diagnosed with COVID-19, there are 10 other individuals who are without symptoms and likely to spread the virus. So, you know, some of these individuals may be coming into our facilities where once it's introduced into long-term care, you can have up to a 30% mortality rate in our individuals who are living in these facilities. So, it's just something we have to be really careful with. And so with Dr. the facilities are, are, doing are you guys actually doing anything in addition um, to sort of prepare for this? I don't know if you're allowing people to come visit in your facilities, but then, I mean, how do you check people if they want to visit their loved ones? Do you t check their temperature? What do you do when you're introducing new people who may be a threat? Well, Anyone who comes to visit it has to be by appointment. Number two, we are going to continue all of the infection practices that we've instituted since the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic. So everyone who comes in, they will have to answer a questionnaire on if their symptomatology, if they've had any. We're going to check their temperatures. We use touch-free uh, infrared temperature uh, thermometers to see if, if you have a temperature. And anyone who meets any of those criteria of possibly having COVID-19, they're going to be excluded from the building. We're also practicing what we call source control, universal source control. Anyone who enters our buildings needs to have on a uh, face mask. Uh, and this is how we continue to decrease the chance of spreading COVID-19 to the population. So if you don't uh, meet the criteria for into the building, you're going to be excluded. And while you're in the building, you are going to have to stay with protective, um, personal protective equipment. So a lot of the conversations so, Dr. That we've been having uh, about COVID-19 have been, sorry, Vlad, have been about, you know, how people become physically ill. But there's this whole other, th there are all these other things that have happened because of that, including people not being able to see their loved ones, particularly when they're sick. I was thinking about Father's Day the other day and how many people, you know, weren't able to visit their their fathers uh, because they're at facilities like this. I know you know personally what it's like to deal with a loss like that because your father succumbed very early on to COVID-19. Can you talk a little bit about the impact of just social isolation on the elderly population? Well, we are social individuals. And if you look at the elderly population, they have a significant amount of loneliness 
um, and the elderly population who lives in long-term care facilities have roughly doubled the amount of loneliness. So what we have tried to do is increase uh, activities. The weather's beautiful, so some facilities are choosing to have outdoor activities where people can social distance and still have some sort of activity, which makes them feel less isolated. Some facilities have done window visits for individuals who uh, have loved ones who want to visit. They can be at a window and they could speak to one another and feel that uh, bond, even though we're, you know, trying to keep our population away from the, the virus. So this is important because the individuals who live in facilities are social, just like any other human being. And whether we're using technology or creative thinking, we are trying to allow them to be who they are completely while staying safe. Uh, so, Doctor, according to the Wall Street Journal, some public health officials have raised concerns over how effective a coronavirus vaccine could be for older adults. Uh, what factors play into how effective a vaccine is for the elderly? Well, as we get older, we have sometimes a weakened immune system. But I think the key thing is we need to do more studies that have elderly individuals involved in the studies. I know that the National Institutes of Health has um, altered their uh, inclusion uh, criteria for clinical research to expand it so that more senior citizens can be added. I know that uh, the Society for Post-Acute and Long-Term Care Medicine, which is also AMDA, has also called for more inclusion of the geriatrics population, as well as Oxford University. They're adding more geriatrics individuals to these studies. Sometimes it could be as simple as needing a higher dose. In the example of the influenza vaccine, we are now using a quadrivalent uh, enhanced dose uh, of that vaccination to better, better uh, have coverage with the geriatrics population. But you don't know if you don't add them to these studies. And this is what we are hopefully going to do with COVID-19. Um, Dr. Dillard Elmore, this is a tough population. I know that you've been sort of, this has been your life for the past um, several months. Um, really appreciate you talking to us. Thank you. It's always a pleasure.